Extreme is reloaded. My name is Tom, and let's get right into the news. So, first up, I want to do updates on a few stories from last week. So, first up, we have MM Dust, who, as a quick reminder, went onto a TwitchCon panel last week and said this. Um, but I need there to be a little bit of a relationship because I don't want to talk to a fucking wall. It's kind of like low key, like God complex kind of thing. Is I yeah. don't feel like many of my viewers should relate themselves to me because. And this is like super, like kind of like, like God comp, like kind of weird. Is like I do think of myself as better than, or not okay. better, but like bigger. Uh, this is going sideways. There's no, there's no good way to say this. I think of myself as like above the average person, so I don't feel like many people could relate to me. As like bad as that sounds, I know. So after this clip came out, he received a lot of backlash, which he told us on Twitter that he would elaborate on stream about. So on to the updates. First off, Dust has updated his sub perks, which previously just said, I don't care about my subs, which the sub perks now say what most channels give, which is access to emotes and ability to talk in sub chat. Which brings me on to one of his streams where he talks about this topic and says all of this was planned out. I'm just kidding, bro. People make mistakes, lol. I know who you are, so I ain't gonna say shit, but I'm sure you weren't trying to sound like a douche. I respect you. Well... Not sound like a douche, bro, but like I'm kind of a douche and it wasn't an accident, okay? So I don't make mistakes, alright? It was 100% planned, thought out, and like just executed properly, okay? I woke up that morning, I woke up Friday morning and said, alright, I'm gonna say some wild ass shit today in front of everybody and I'm gonna make sure I do it when I'm being streamed. And someone's gonna see that shit, and they're gonna clip it, and it's gonna blow the fuck up, and it's gonna, it's gonna get me millions of views, dude. Millions of people will see my name. They'll know who I am. That's, that's the mind of an above average streamer. Don't ever, <laughs> don't ever <laughs> say that I make mistakes, because I don't. And of course, once again, this clip doesn't sound too good, but he did in a later stream say that that clip was sarcasm. Which brings me on to Wednesday where MM Dust brought out an apology in the form of a twitlonger. So going over this, first he covers that what he said at TwitchCon was stupid and not an accurate representation of who he is. Then going on to cover what he did and said at TwitchCon as if there were people reading this that didn't know. Then giving the reason that why he said this had to do with his mindset and personal lack of self-discipline and motivation. Something which he has been struggling with for for years, by making himself believe that when it came to dieting, exercise and his own personal obligations and responsibilities, he uses this I am better mentality to push through. Then going on to say what he was really saying is that I don't want my views to relate to me because he's so far from where he wants to be. Finally saying this portrayal that he doesn't respect his community isn't true, he's truly sorry and wishes he apologised sooner, and then puts this down to misspeaking and not being prepared for the panel. So yeah, that is his response, let me know in the comment section below if you accept or deny his apology. Apology. But as far as it goes, that is all for that one. And so now on to Etika. As a quick reminder, last week he terminated his own YouTube channel by uploading several porn videos to it, which caused enough strike on his account to get it terminated. Then we had the update last week that he was put into a mental hospital, which brings us on to this week. So the day after we were told he was going into a mental hospital, he started streaming on Twitch, where he talked about the whole situation and why he won't be going back to YouTube. Now I watched his stream on and off and I can't directly quote him here, but what I picked up as far as the suicide post from last week goes, he told us that's simply not the way he thinks and suicide didn't even come as a thought when he was writing them. As far as the YouTube channel thing goes, I picked up that he closed his channel due to the worry of monetization and needing every video to be under YouTube's guidelines. As well as he's brought an apology out on his own subreddit where he simply apologizes for worrying so many people and that he's now a changed man. Which brings me on to the final update from Etika. So first off, here is the clip. Hit to me, man. V1 hit me up. He was like, "Yo, brother, did you come out on Facebook? <laughs> did you come out on Facebook? Because there are messages there that made me wonder if you got hacked. Because you know, I was talking about the whole gay thing, sucking dick. That oh, I don't care if people call me gay anymore. And I was like, yes, nigga, I am a faggot. I suck dick OD. <laughs> and, it was, and he was like, yo, it's a, if it's the truth, we still love you. And I, and I was like, yo, appreciate that, bro. Much love. So yes, he used a particular F word in that clip and is now banned off Twitch. He hasn't said how long the ban will be, but it will most likely either be 7 days or 30 days, but we won't find out till next Wednesday. Which brings me on to the final outcome to this. Etika has made a new YouTube channel to stream on. He has said on Twitter though that he will be deleting this at some point, most likely when he gets his Twitch back. And that is all for this one. On to Monday, one of the members of the SFAND TV stream had their phone stolen. Upon realising, erob221 alongside SFAND TV used Google tracking 
hacking to find where the phone went. That's where they find the thieves who stole the phone and confront them about it. So to start off, this clip is very dark, but here it is. I can't. I'm, I'm reading my chat. I can't call the police. I, mean, I don't care. I'll ring the doorbell. No, no, no. Call the police. Wait, wait, wait. I hear it. Please call. Oh, you hear it? Oh, you actually. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Oh, my God. Yo, hang on. I have my phone here. Yo, I can't find my phone. And I need to find my Android. Google says our phone's here, and we call the police. They're coming right now. All right. My phone. Huh? My phone's here. Can we can we get the phone? We just heard it ring. No, no, that's not what we said. Can we can we get the phone? We think somebody accidentally picked up her phone. We just heard it beep whenever we whenever we hit the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Pr press the button. We just heard it ring. Somebody accidentally must have picked it up. Yeah, it was an accident, dog. Like, it must have been at the restaurant. They might have picked up an accident. Uh, the hotel, you yeah. mean? No. Cause you had it at the hotel. Let's see. Press the press the button again. It's it's ringing. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. I hear yeah. It. Okay. He just like hand us the phone. Like, it's not a big deal. He just like give us the phone. It's like really not a big deal. That's the whole thing. I don't have the phone. No, no, we, we hear it. I hear it. I don't see the big deal. Like, you just hand us the phone. Like, it's, it's... What are you talking about? I don't have a phone. Bro, can you check your living room? Oh, maybe, 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 like, yo, you have a big house. Maybe us? someone you stayed with accidentally got I, I, I hear it ringing. Like, don't. No, hey, but, but we. As soon as we hit the call button, like, it starts ringing. That's weird, dude. Like, uh. Yeah, just call the cops. Call, call, call the cops. Call, call the cops. Can you call the cops? Why are you, like, I don't. What's the big deal? Ebron, Ebron, come on, just call the cops. Yeah, just hand us the phone. Yeah, we're good. Get off this property and call the cops. No, we're not. Somebody else might have picked it up. So from here, they confronted the thief who stole the phone, and even after hearing the ringtone, the thief still denies having their phone. So from here, they decide to walk away and call the cops. No, I'm, I'm, in, I'm outside, and I hear the phone inside, but they're claiming that they don't have the phone. From here, they wait for the cops and watch the tracking, where they notice this thief threw the phone into the back garden. Same spot in the backyard, yeah? Yep, he threw it. And around 35 minutes after the original call, the cops show up. At this point, they go back towards the house and find the thief attempted to destroy the phone. And sadly, that is really it. So finally, here is that clip. Oh! Oh! <gasps> Dude, there we go. Oh Look at that. Did it, did it, did it get cracked? Oh. They, they tried to break it probably. Really? Oh, what? They busted it up good. Really? Are you really? They, dude, Google. What the fuck? Well, at least you have your phone. Are you serious? Did you lose anything else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, they missed. They tried to. And then we have the last story stemming from TwitchCon that involves XQC, Destiny, Soda Poppin, Trainwrecks TV, and Snail Boy. So first off, as a bit of context, Snail Boy went to TwitchCon and showed up on a lot of streams, mainly Greek God X's, where he followed Soda Poppin and XQC around everywhere. That is where Destiny records Snail Boy saying this. All right, what's up, buddy? What's your name? Snail Boy. Snail Boy. Snail. Snail Boy. And who's your favorite streamer on Twitch TV? XQC. Why do you like him so much? This, of course, is Destiny making the joke that all XQC viewers are kids. And so this is where Snail Boy ends up on Trainwreck's TV stream where the topic comes up. Trainwreck asks Snail Boy about the situation, where Snail Boy says it was all set up. So here I have three clips for this one. First off, Trainwreck's clip, and then XQC, and finally Destiny's response. Okay, and I was watching some livestream fails clips, and okay. I saw that you said XQC was your favorite streamer. No, no, no. Okay, so Destiny, all right? Okay. He set it up. It was all a setup. It was a setup. Yeah, yeah. So I met with Destiny. Set it up. It was all a setup. Oh, you fucker. It was a setup. Yeah, yeah. So I met with Destiny, right? Okay, yeah. And then he's like, "Can I get a video of you ta uh, saying that XQC is my favorite streamer?" Oh, so. wow, really? Yeah. It was. It was so. It. it was scripted. Yes. Oh my God. Okay, and I was watching. Dude, that's f***ed up, man. This is a f He watches them anyway. He doesn't pull the viewership. He'll be dead in two months. Pussy.
Listen up. XGC's content is shit. That kid says that I staged it. I didn't fucking stage shit. Trainwreck staged him staging it. The fact of the matter is that when I walked in, there were two separate daycares at fucking TwitchCon to take care of the under 13 crowd, all right? One of them was for Ninja, the other one was for XQC. That's the, just the goddamn truth, boys. XQC's fans are on average fucking too young to even go into fucking middle school. On to Tuesday, I had the Twitch streamer Stormfall33, who had a clip that went a bit viral on Reddit, where she made a joke about cup size. Because of this clip, she received harassment from the community for it. So here, quite a short one, I've got two clips. First off, the joke she made, and then her response to the harassment. I'll donate if you tell me your cup size. I think this is 32 ounces. It's really big. I've gotten so much harassment from this clip. It's fucking insane. Like, legit death threats from people telling me to just, like, go kill myself. Because I'm a, like, I'm a fucking thought now, I guess. Ugh. Oh. Reddit has actually declared me a thought. I'm, I, we're a hog squeezing stream now, boys. Fucking whip them out. Whoo. Oh. Is it really that easy, though? To just go on Twitch, whip your tits out, and, and play League and watch money just flow into your bank account. On to Thursday, Kiara Kitty is now banned once again. She was banned two months ago for hateful speech and has now received another 30 day ban, which is interesting because normally a 30 day ban leads into a permanent ban. But here instead, it appears she's received another 30 day ban, but this time has been stripped of her partnership status, which means she loses the ability to have people subscribe to her channel. Twitch also give context as to why she received a ban here, and the context is that she goes up to a random person in public with the intent of singing them a song. This guy was extremely uncomfortable. On top of that, walking into the clip, she calls this person a white devil. So I do have the clip here to finish this one off. Here it is. Okay, maybe here. Okay, this guy over there. Alright, I think the white devil, yeah? Hey! I just ran away from home and I feel really depressed, but can I sing you a song? As well on Thursday, we have another ban, this time permanent, that comes from the user the underscore fabgod, who was doing a 12 hour stream and received reports based on his name. Because of this, his channel is now permanently banned because of it. He's reached out to Twitch and received a response that says they will unban him, but not his account which will stay permanently banned. So what he has to do now is create a new account, which he has under the underscore Fox God, and lost an account with almost 3,000 followers. And so the final one for this week comes from Rin, who is the lead artist of the game creation of Everland, which is Wreckful's game. And this starts when she said this on stream. If it was work, Everland should pay for the ticket. Well, Byron is like, Byron is like pretty scuffed boss, so. You know, I mean, he's a Jew. So yeah, this was in reference to Wreckful's employees having to pay for their own tickets to go to TwitchCon, where Everland, the game Wreckful is creating, had a booth. So the outcome to this is that Rin told us on Discord that she received a 30 day ban for what she said. Never mind, there is one more from Saturday where Soda Poppin at BlizzCon ran into SS Sniper Wolf and said, your life sucks. That is where Momo Kun, which if you know about her, comes in and calls Soda an asshole. This of course had quite a big response on Reddit, but anyway, to finish off, here is that clip. It's Sniper Wolf. SS Sniper Wolf. Oh my god, you're in so much drama. Yeah. Yeah, they keep stuck. Your life yeah. sucks. Stop, stop, stop. It, it says you're in drama. Don't cause drama. No, you're kind of an asshole. Yeah. I am? I'm so sorry. No, no, no. I think she's great. I'm so sorry. You're kind of an asshole. I'm an asshole? You are. What did I do? I'm sorry. Awkward chance. I'm always awkward. Can I, hi, my name is Chance. It's really nice to meet you. What's happening? Now I'm an asshole. I kind of lost sight of what's happening, dude. Let's get alcohol, man. I don't know what's going on, Felix. It doesn't feel real. 
Anyway, guys, that is it for the video today. I want to thank you for watching as normal. And as always, links to everything I spoke about in the video will be in the Reddit link down below. That's all. I want to thank you for watching as normal, and I'll see you in the next one.